It is Super Week. The big game is on Sunday, Tampa Bay versus Kansas City. And our coverage all week long is brought to you by Original 16 Canadian Ultra. Lager, superior taste with only 80 calories and 2.5% alcohol. And joining us to talk about the big game. And part of our team of NFL insiders is Jim Lang. Has been for quite some time. Hey, Jimbo, thanks for sitting through the bake there. I appreciate it. Hey, this Super Bowl week, what memories are coming back for you as you've covered, I believe, five in person? Uh, well, hi, Rod. A, a couple of the memories for me that come up is the actual being there because you have media day and then you're there in the morning talking to the coaches and then talking to different players. But that's what's so different about this week because the Chiefs are in Kansas City all week. They're not arriving into Tampa until Friday going right to the hotel and they won't leave that hotel till they're at the game. And when you're around the players at the morning availability, the non-key player. So you'll have basically like banquet rooms at a breakfast buffet that you can just sit around and actually have a conversation with the players away from a lot of the, the maelstrom. And you have quality time with people like Rod Woodson and Dallas Clark and really get to get some off the record and on the record information that you're just not going to get anywhere else. And that's some of my favorite memories. Oh, I don't doubt that for a second. And isn't that odd that you could be playing in a Super Bowl and not get to town until 48 hours prior to the game? Probably exactly what Andy Reid wants. And before we get into the break, uh, the breakdown of the matchup, how about Tom Brady telling Media Day yesterday that he would like to play past 45? Why wouldn't he? He looks 23, not 43. Now, I totally am on board with that, Rod. And for these reasons, Tom Brady, to his credit, each five years, if you look at five-year segments of his career, he has changed his training, his rest, his sleep patterns, his diet, pre-game and post-game to make himself better. So right now, at his age, at 43, he eats better, sleeps better, trains better than he did 10 years ago. So his body is limber, more flexible, stronger, more able to withstand the rigors of the NFL season and the offseason. He's, he's always thinking... How can I prepare myself, mind, body, and spirit for the next game? I mean, everyone jokes about it, but, you know, he eats avocado ice cream because he's done the research, and for his body, it's healthier. There's all these foods that we take for granted that he will not eat. There's all these things that he does training-wise that look weird, but, I mean, the proof is in the pudding. Look at how effective he still is at 43, and the way he takes care of his body, the way he trains, the way he studies – the way he's such a student of the game, the, the only reason that Tom Brady's going to stop playing football is because Tom Brady decides to stop playing football. Because yeah. I, most athletes get to a certain point, they just, it, it, the, the mental pressure to train and work out and eat and sleep to that level week after week, month after month, they get tired of it. He still hasn't. No, I know. And Bo, here's what people don't understand. Because I remember watching the Super Bowl when they came back from 27-3 down to Atlanta, 28-3, whatever it was. And yeah. one of the guys I was watching the game with, he goes, I wish I had Tom Brady's life. And I'm like, no, you don't. You, you don't have the discipline to commit to what Tom's doing. Nor do I. I'm not giving up coffee or sugar or no. all the things that Tom does, right? That, it's not the life that you think. No, I mean, he won't eat strawberries. Like, there's, it's bizarre. You can go down and Google all the foods that he will not eat because he's done research. I'm like, I love strawberries in the springtime. I'm not like, like you. I'm not giving that up. So there's a price to pay for any athlete at that level of success. Sidney Crosby, LeBron James, Tom Brady. You look at the elite athletes at their sport. It is a complete commitment 12 months a year. They might give themselves a few weeks off a year for family time. But the families have to understand that it's a 24-7 job, studying, film work, training, you name it. It's, it's everything is going in to make him the best athlete possible every time he steps on the field to play. And there's a lot of athletes that get to the point where they can't do it anymore. But mentally, they burn out and then they retire from their respective sport and they want to eat a pizza on a Friday night. <laughs> they wanted to just oh. sit by the poolside in the summer. You know, I remember, I, mean? I remember Jarrell, you know. Jarrell Freeman. Yeah, the rider, great, went on to play with the Colts. The first thing he did yeah. when he retired was he went to Five Guys. He's like, I haven't been able to have right. a burger for ten years. <laughs> now, do you think about that sacrifice? I mean, I'm yeah. not giving up Five Guys. No, exactly. I want to just chime in with some comments from some viewers. Gary Lincoln says, uh, "A bit late." Greetings from Winnipeg. Liked and shared. Thank you, Gary. Appreciate it. Lemuel Alquino. 
says Brady has every right to play past 45. The dude is toned and disciplined. He's 43 and carried the Bucks to the Super Bowl. Yeah, for sure. How, why would you yeah. not want him 40? He's better than guys half his age, literally. And then one more, Chris Bird in Toronto says, so no beer and wings before the game for Brady? Not before, <laughs> not after, potentially not ever. But our poll question today for Capital Automall Universal Collision Center, Jim, is it's a prop bet. Who will have more passing yards in the Super Bowl, Tom Brady or Patrick Mahomes? And the way I've, and I'll get your opinion on this in a second, but the way I'm looking at it is, as much as I love Brady, Mahomes will pass for more yards because I think they're coming after Brady hard. So it's going to be a short passing game, relying a lot on Leonard Fournette and Ronald Jones in the run game to negate that attack, that rush. So Mahomes will probably pass for more yards. I still want the Bucks to win the game, but that would be the way I'd lean on that vote. How about you? I'm going Tom Brady for this reason. The injury to Eric Fisher in the Chiefs offensive line last week was a tough, tough blow for Andy Reid and Eric Bieniemy and that Chiefs offense. The offensive line had already been patched together because of a number of reasons, and now they're down to second and third stringers at key positions in the offensive line. Ask Aaron Rodgers how effective Jason Pierre-Paul and Shaq Barrett are are off the edge getting pressure. And Todd Bowles knows that he's going against a, a weak offensive line. They will try to get as much pressure as possible. And the fact that Patrick Mahomes still is dealing with a toe injury and is as mobile as he is, isn't quite as mobile as he was if he was 100% healthy. And the other reason I like Tom Brady to do it is he has a unique ability to not lock in a receiver and spread the ball around. You, If you take away... Evans and Godden, he will spread the ball around to other players. He doesn't care if you're open, he's going to throw it, catch the ball. I I'm really like Tom Brady's chances to, I mean, I'm just talking of a huge margin, but I have concerns about the Chiefs and their offensive line and how much time Patrick Mahomes is going to have to throw the football. The Chiefs will have to rely on developing some kind of running game to keep that front seven of the Buccaneers at bay. Todd Bowles and that front seven know that they can get pressure. Now, if you're the Chiefs, this is from Super Bowl 42. And the defensive coordinator for the Giants in that huge win over Tom Brady and the Patriots was Steve Spagnolo, who happens to be a defensive coordinator for the Kansas City Chiefs. And the key to stopping Tom Brady is not pressure on the outside, it's pressure in his face. So you need to find a way between the two A gaps to get pressure right up the middle as fast as possible so he doesn't have time to get set. He's a real rhythm quarterback, three step, five step, top of the drop let the ball go, and he's just firing it away. But if it's in his face, he doesn't have time. And Tom Brady, as fit as he is, is not going to run around like a like a Deshaun Watson. So that's where the chess game is going to be fascinating for this game. Both teams have some weaknesses that concern them. Both teams are stocked with great offensive talent. Both teams have elite quarterbacks, and both teams have great coordinators and great coaching staffs who could try to exploit. So expect a game that goes back and forth like a heavyweight title boat, and the team with the ball at the end of the game likely will be the winner. Yeah, I think it's going to be awesome. I've got 37-30 Tampa winning, but that's the only reason why I don't think Brady will have the passing yards. I don't think you're going to see the chunk plays to Mike Evans and Gronk and that group. And A.B., like, where's he been? But but anyways, I want to say this and then move on to hockey because the Leafs are number one in Canada, Jim, so I'm going to give you that. But one of those Super Bowls that you covered was in Tampa, correct? It certainly was. It's one of the greatest football games I've ever seen. Super Steelers Bowl Cardinals. It certainly was. I mean, I was sitting there and the media stands on the 35 yard line, looking straight down on James Harrison, taking that ball 99 yards for the touchdown. And the fascinating thing about that game is Dick LeBeau. And I talked to Ryan Clark about this two years after that Super Bowl at Steelers training camp. So Dick LeBeau had the Steelers defensive backs playing like they would to receive a punt. Because Larry Fitzgerald had laid waste that playoffs to every defense he had seen. So they were playing their safeties like they were back to receive a kick. Thinking, no way we're going to get Larry Fitzgerald to beat us. Well, sure enough, Kurt Warner started throwing short pass and short pass. And the defense started to creep up. And then Larry Fitzgerald to slip behind them. And it was a 66-yard touchdown. And the Cardinals had the lead. And that stadium was going bonkers. And then... The famous play from Ben Roethlisberger to Santonio Holmes where he dragged the toes in. It was, I mean, I mean, the stadium was vibrating at the end of the game. Uh, it was heartbreaking to see Kurt Warner and the Cardinals walk beside us before we went on the field for the postgame interviews, looking utterly dejected. But 
It, that is one of the greatest playoffs in a losing cause, that whole run by Larry Fitzgerald. I'd ever seen a receiver. He was virtually unstoppable, and it, it took a miracle play from Roethlisberger to Santonio Holmes to win the game. But yeah, just an incredible stadium, an incredible place for a football game, and a memory I'll never forget. Well, the reason I brought that up is for those that aren't familiar with the Tampa area. I got a really good friend, Dan Goodspeed, who was on the 03 Buccaneers that won the Super Bowl. So I was at a game in Tampa. Oh, yeah. And Goody's like, hey, they're honoring me at halftime. Why don't you come down? I have photo evidence, by the way. Did I ever tell you this story? Yeah. And so I said, no offense, Goody, but you are a backup right tackle. Why are they honoring <laughs> you? You know me, Jim. I would ask that question, right? And Goody just yeah, laughed. Yeah, yeah. What? Well, I, that's me. And he goes, he yeah, goes, no listen. There's only like five of us that live around here. All Stott, uh, Brad Johnson, the quarterback, and yeah. Rondé Barber. And he goes, and John Gruden's here, but he'll have nothing to do with the team since they fired him. He's still upset. No. So he's like, every fifth game, they bring me in as the featured alumni. It's hilarious. They would say, so if the Bucks win this one, with all due respect to Dan Goodspeed and that crew I just mentioned, they're going to have new heroes in Tampa Bay. Well, I mean, and then Tom Brady's legacy in the Mount Rushmore, not just of the NFL, Rod, of great athletes sports. in the history of yeah. pro sports is forever cemented. To to leave the cocoon of Bill Belichick and the Patriots, and everyone said it's Belichick and the Patriots' way, to come to Tampa Bay, new coordinator, new coach, new city, new teammates, and to put the team in a position where they are right now. If he wins this game at 43 in his 10th Super Bowl with a new team... I, I mean, I mean, I mean uh, there's only a handful of athletes in the history of sports, of all sports, that deserve to be put in the same categories that accomplishment. Good for him. The greatest of them all. Um, so, hey, the Leafs. Is this the best Leafs team ever? I'm the first one to say well, that. No. <laughs> no, I'm just it's saying, not the best yeah, you, know, you know what I'm saying. But I'm just saying no, they're first what, place. What's, what's been great is Sheldon Keith. Instead of being dropped into the middle of a crazy season after Mike Babcock was fired, is getting an off season, getting a training camp, and getting an opportunity to build a team and have them play like he wants, getting additions like Wayne Simmons and TJ Brody to augment what they already have. If they actually hold leads, they can win one goal games. And when they're winning one goal games, that's bad news for the rest of the all Canadian North Division. Because a lot of people assume the least can't hold a, a lead and can't win one goal games. Now, if they're doing that with all their offensive pile, firepower and their power play, it's going to be scary for their teams, the old Canadian North Division. I just hope it gets hope because the Montreal Canadiens have been so good this year that we end up seeing at least Montreal Canadiens playoff series because we haven't seen one since 1979. And I think as a hockey fan, for selfish reasons, I'd like to see it. Me too. It's been a fantastic year for sports that way in the major leagues. Jim, thanks for this, man. Enjoy the game and uh, let's do it again soon. Loving it. <laughs> Me too. Thanks, Jimbo. Jim Lang, Canada's foremost NFL expert. I've been calling him that for years. We've been on the same team for years, and I love it. In our coverage of Super Week, brought to you by Original 16 Ultra Lager. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.